Happy spring, all. Happy spring. And what a beautiful first day of spring morning we have. Everybody say amen. Amen. Uh, it is good. It's one of God's promises to us. Begin to see bulbs coming up, which I have some at the parsonage beginning to come up. They've all been teasing me because I still haven't seen my first robin. <laughs> I've heard them. I actually searched for them. I didn't find them. Roger walks to a window and I said, what are you doing? He says, I'm watching the robins. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I'll see them. <laughs> and next will be our Orioles will be coming quickly now. And then a little bit later, the hummingbirds that we so enjoy watching. So wonderful things to look forward to this springtime. This is a little welcome for us today that I found in the midst of some of my resources. It says, stop looking for the perfect church. And I added, and the perfect pastor. Go worship a perfect God today with a congregation of flawed people who need grace just as much as you do. Everybody say amen to that one too. Isn't that the truth? We keep searching for the perfect pastor, the perfect church, the perfect people when we are so imperfect. That's why we need a savior, right? That's why I need a savior. That's because I am imperfect. None are perfect except for our Christ. Hallelujah. Here's some uh, announcements for us this morning. If you still haven't picked up one of the March, April calendars that are out on the table in the Netflix, please do so because there's lots of extra activities going on during Lent. The free community soup supper at the St. Louis Church is this Tuesday. There will be four soups to choose from and then salad, bread, and dessert. So if you need to know of someone or you yourself need a, a warm, nutritious meal, uh, they begin serving at 4.30 uh, through their drive through the drive through style. So uh, tell folks about it. The adult study, Woody Knock, Embracing the Imperfections of Life and Faith will meet at the St. Louis Church this week at 6.30. And choir practice also will be at the St. Louis facility this Thursday from six, uh, at 6.30. And they got, a, they got a really nice start uh, last week, a small group, but a, a fun, good, and small group to be a part of. And you are welcome to join that. The goal is to sing uh, at, on Easter morning at both churches. And so... It's not uh, too late to join me in one of those groups. We need hotel size personal need products. There's a basket out in the narthex. Uh, those are going to be bagged up and given to the area nursing homes uh, later in the month. And if you have printed Christian reading materials of any kind, books, devotions, uh, Sunday school curriculum, even choir music, um, anything that's Christian and printed. They also take CDs and tapes and, and VHS tapes because folks around the world don't have all the modern technology that we have. But later in the season, we're going to be taking those printed resources over to Christian Resources International in Fowlerville for the day and, um, and sign up to, to go with us to be um, helpful. We'll tour the, tour the facility. We're not going to work there that day, but we'll tour the facility to see uh, what they're doing with all those printed resources going all around the world. Some people ask how they can help in Ukraine. Of course, the biggest thing we can do is pray, but we can also give our gifts, the abundance of our gifts. And so on your announcement page, you'll find three ways to give financial gifts for the help of Ukraine through the United Methodist Committee on Relief, UNCOR. 100% of your gifts through UNCOR go to whatever it is that you're giving money to. There is no administrative cost that comes out of the church's ministry shares. 
There's very few organizations that can make that claim that 100% of what you give goes to the specific uh, project that, we'll, that you're working on. Also, the Narvex is a sign-up list. There's a lot of sign-up lists out there right now. I need people to make two dozen cookies for cookie platters or plates that will go out into the community with invitations to Easter morning worship on them. So if you can help out with some cookies, uh, please do so. And then lastly, you'll see down in the corner that I wrote in, there's an outreach meeting on Tuesday, April 5th at 3 p.m. If you serve on that committee or are interested in the outreach projects, uh, please um, come to that meeting. Well, we've been working now for the last uh, couple of weeks on good enough embracing the imperfections of life and faith. And we find ourselves today looking at taking on patience. Who needs a little bit more patience? Wow, that's not very many people. How many of you are honest? <laughs> uh, well, I do. Yeah, taking on some more patience and understanding and extending grace to each other, the grace that we've already received. What a wonderful thing to do. So that's where we're at with our sermon series. Join me now in our threshold moment by repeating uh, in just a minute to our little uh, phrases up there. As we continue our look at what it means to release oppressive expectations about perfection in our life and faith, this week, we turn to a harmful idea that the prescription for our fear of failure is to simply work harder. We might feel we are climbing an endless staircase of achievement for high grades of success in caregiving or work or even social pressure. This Lent, we are taking some time to stop Climbing ladders. Stop climbing staircases to tend to our souls slowly and lovingly, tilling the soil and fertilizing the soil and embracing our holy, good enough lives. Join me in our unison response. What in our lives do we dream about for tomorrow? Void of sorrow, time spent regretting decisions of our yesterdays, mistakes we made, sometimes we get what we get, life disappoints us and yet, God is still here and somehow this faith is good enough. God is still here and somehow this day is good enough. Our call to God today is based on Psalm 63. Let us pray together. Holy One, our law, our feast, we lift our hands and call on your name in need of healing, thirsty and hungry. Open us this day to your nourishment in the songs of the land, in the beauty of the sky, in the simple and good enough moments that fill our days. Amen. It's time for our kids to uh, come forward and spend a couple minutes with Edith and myself. A couple of you have got something to bring with you today, too. Yeah, there we go. No, you just hold on to it for just a second. But we'll get on. Okay, those are tools, aren't they? Good morning. I see you came to work the land. It's a good thing because we have to get some dirt ready to plant this little. Dad, tell me something. <laughs> I need some my tools to Oh, you are so lucky. When do you think I'm going to see my first job? Maybe today. Maybe today. <laughs> I'll let you know. 
Well, we've got some dirt because we're going to be doing some some planting. You know, the, 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 the flowers that were in this container, they lived as long as they were supposed to live, and now it's time to replant something else. So we're going to um, uh, need to put some soil in there. So I need your, I need that one, I need that one. Yep. There we go. All right, so we're going to be putting some dirt in here, and then we need to make it as fertile as possible. Fertile? Yes, fertile. <laughs> How do you spell that? F-U-R-T-I-L-E. Oh, I think you mean fur. How do you spell that? <laughs> F E R T I L E. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, this bucket has dirt in it, but also, so there's some more dirt, but also, here is some, here is some fertilizer. This bucket has that stuff, you know, that helps things to grow. It came out of the hmm, furry side, the, the back end side of an animal. So it's fertilizer. <laughs> well, that's one way to explain it. Kids, do you know what fertilizer is? It comes in many forms, but the most organic, natural fertilizer that gardeners and farmers use is like that. You want to smell it? I smell it. P-U! Yeah! Yep, good stuff. Let's put a little of that in the tub and mix it around with the other dirt. Alright, that's what we're doing here. This is like medicine for the dirt. It makes it healthier, and then whatever grows in it will be healthier. It's kind of funny that mixing in the icky stuff is what helps things grow. But I guess that's what it's like when we need some help, too, to understand that lots of things can be medicine. Even the icky stuff can be medicine, like cough syrup or doing chores. Uh oh saying I'm sorry. It might not be pleasant, but those things will help us to grow and be healthy the way that God has created us. Now that you have the soil ready, put your plant in there and let's watch it grow. We will put some plants in there. Just pretend that we put a plant in there today, okay? Can you see it? What color flowers does the plant have on it in your imagination? Yellow flowers on it. Okay. okay. So, so we're going to just say, grow! Nothing's happening. Do you see anything happening? Grow! It is <laughs> Ah, but something is happening. Now is the time to chill and know that something... Sometimes growth happens slowly, without too much effort. We have to let the roots soak up the nutrients of the fertilized soil slowly and be patient. Sometimes just being patient and present is the only thing we need to do. So let's say our repeat after me prayer and let the plant, the pretend plant, but there will be a real plant in there, Let's give it some time. Let's be patient and see if it will grow for us. So repeat after me. I look at you. I look at me. I look at me. I celebrate. I celebrate. What I see. What I see. God made all. God made all. The smooth and rough. The smooth and rough. No matter what. No matter what. You're good enough. You're good enough. <laughs> you guys had a wonderful time in junior church today with Marisa.
Wonderful. Thanks for being good helpers today, too. And Matthew's right. He, he was whispering to me, it needs water. <laughs> <laughs> summer, summer. <laughs> I know Pastor's first sign of spring was a robin to see. I always hear the first sound of spring, which is when motorcycles start going. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Our opening medley this morning is on Eagle's Wings that's found in your hymnal at 143 and also on the screen and As the Deer in the Black Hymnal Book on 2025. <laughs> these days can diagnose what's wrong and sell us the antidote in three amazing sessions for a low, low price that is guaranteed to turn our lives around. But the gardener, the gardener, offers an alternative medicine. Nurture it slowly letting it soak in the manure all around until it can get the good stuff out of it. Lying fallow and getting fertilized with laughter and tears at the crappy stuff of life can help heal what ails us. Is this not sometimes productive enough? 
one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, although I don't live it out very well, is just be still. Be still and know. Be still and know that I am God. What productivity expectations are holding us? Holding me, holding you captive. Let's take a couple of moments of silent reflection and confess of prayer. We're going to do that by doing three of those breath prayers where we breathe Jesus in, hold it for a second, and then as we exhale, just try to let go of all the things that are burdening you. Three breath prayers. Let's pray. Jesus in. Hold it. And let go. And again. One last time. Hear this compassionate word from the prophet Isaiah. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Know that already God is offering us love enough, no matter how much we attain or achieve. We are invited to release oppressive expectations of ourselves and others so that we might recognize the truth, truth worth afforded to all. And know that despite our sometimes faltering steps, in the name of Jesus our Christ, you are being forgiven even now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are being forgiven even now. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. We're at Housing of the Peace. We should be getting there uh, now. Um, I'm good enough through Christ's sacrifice. So if we remember, I is just your little finger. You put it towards your chest area. M is your index finger with a twist. I am good is you take your fingers to your lips and then down to your other hand. Doesn't matter which side you're chewing it on. Um, so I am good. You know, it's like a cup and you level the cup off. So I am good enough through is the easy one. You just go through through your, your palm. We know that Christ right now for us is the letter C and the sash that a Christ might have worn. And then sacrifice is the letter S. There's the letter S, and we just take it and open it up. Like you're giving an offering, you're giving a sacrifice. Let's do it all together. I am good enough through Christ's sacrifice. You guys are really good at this. <laughs> Bless you. I'm going to ask you to take your hymnal and turn to page 788 to Psalm 63. We're going to use the Psalter um, this morning, and Edith will lead us through that on the normal face print, and we'll respond on the bold face print. And every time we see the capital red letter R, we'll go back up to that spunk and the response, and that's where we're going to start. So let's start. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, thirsting for you, my God. O God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where no water is. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. 
So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord. Thirsting for you, my God. My soul is feasted with as with marrow and fat, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I think of you upon my bed and meditate upon you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul clings to you, your right hand upholds me. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, thirsting for you, my God. But those who seek to destroy my life shall go down into the depths of the earth. They shall be given over to the power of the sword. They shall be prey for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. All who swear in God's name shall glory, but the mouths of liars will be stopped. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, thirsting for you, my God. Our next uh, hymn is found in the Methodist Temple, page 357, Just As I Am Without One Plea. Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. 
Jesus asked them, Do you think because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all the other Galileans? No. I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and I still find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? But the gardener replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. A word of God that is still speaking. Thanks be to God. And I'm going to ask you to turn back to just as I am, without one plea, 357 in the hymnal. Maybe you can do it even from memory. And let's just sing a couple verses again. I just feel that need right now. Jesus is coming to the end 
of his earthly ministry, his days with us. He's heading towards Jerusalem on his final, his third trip into Jerusalem. In week one and two of Good Enough, embracing the imperfections of life and faith, we were asked, we were encouraged to give up something for our season of Lent. To give up our perfectionistic tendencies, week one, and to give up our desire for control over all things week two. This week, the third week of Lent, we're asking to take on Take on patience. Lots of things can be medicine. In verses 1 through 5 of chapter 13, we find Jesus responding to the comments and questions concerning the murder of Gentiles, non-Jews, and the murder of some righteous Jews who were killed while they were performing their religious duties. The non-Jews, the Gentiles, were opposing the policies of ruling Roman Governor Pontius Pilate. The story only appears in Luke's Gospel. But Pontius Pilate is recorded in history as a ruler who would kill those who displeased him. He would kill those who opposed him. The crowd wanted to see how Jesus would respond to the murders, the slaughters, of these Gentiles, but even more importantly, how he would respond to the murders of righteous Jews performing their religious duties. A prevalent belief in Jesus' day was that severe calamities happened only to people who deserved God's judgment. Truly righteous people would be spared of the suffering, some believed. This is a belief that Jesus rejected. He taught that the precariousness of our life in a fallen world, that we should take stock of our own spiritual conditions. Jesus told many parables, and he often used lessons from the vineyard and the garden. According to Old Testament law, no one was ever to eat fruit from a newly planted tree for the first three years. In the fourth year, the produce belong to God. Remember what the scripture that I read said? Find it again. Again. He said to the gardener, see here for three years and come looking for fruit on this fig tree and still I find none. Cut it down. Let alone for one more year, the fourth year. If it doesn't produce, then you can cut it down. So the Jewish law said no fruit could be eaten for three years. And the fourth year would belong to God. Using the Israelites' lives and our lives, God gives us ample 
time to repent, to turn around. God gives us ample time to bear fruit. Eventually, God's judgment will come. The theme of the fig tree and the judgment about whether it is worthy of existence is a parallel to our lives. Worship design leader Marsha McPhee writes this. Every time I take a walk in my neighborhood, I go by the neighbor's fig tree. She lives in Reno, Nevada, that, lot, that lives at the border of her extensive front garden. And usually the neighbor is out tending to the garden. The truth is that successfully nurturing anything takes time and patience and knowing what kind of plant needs what to flourish and blossom. Every plant, just like every person, is unique. Every plant needs a different amount of fertilizer, of water, of sunlight, of care just like every person does. Well, at the parsonage at West Vienna United Methodist in Kyle, some dear soul had planted peonies. I like peonies. I was there almost 15 years. The peonies never bloomed, not once, because they weren't planted correctly, either too deep or too shallow. A waste, really. Roger and I have a tulip tree in the front yard at Pels and Chesame. I love, I love tulip trees and magnolia trees. We've been there 21 years. It's never bloomed. We've fertilized it, we've tried to care for it, it looks healthy, but it's never bloomed. How many of you have ever tried to grow violets and get them to bloom? <laughs> they need an east window. If you get water on their leaves, the most fuzzy little leaves, those fuzzy little leaves don't like water. <laughs> you have to water it from underneath. How many of you have tried to grow orchids? Do you know how to water an orchid? How many a week? One. <laughs> One ice cube. A week. Interesting, huh? <laughs> So see plants like people. You have to know what they need, how they need it, when they need it. And it all takes patience. So with this we find ourselves back at the idea of repentance and worthiness. When asked whether the Galileans or the Jerusalemites who perished, who were murdered, were any worse than others as a reason for their demise, Jesus says a flat out no. But if the conditions for thriving are not met, in other words, if we're not in a right relationship with God, 
and each other and our neighbors and strangers. If we're not in a right relationship, then thriving is impossible. And that calls us for the need to repent, to turn around. And if we don't, Scripture says we shall perish, just like the plant that isn't getting what it needs. So what medicine do we need for what ails us? What do we need to help us to turn around to repent. Most of us default to going our own way, pulling up our own bootstraps and soldiering on. But has that worked? Has it worked in the past? Is it working now? Perhaps it's time to try something different. What do we need for nourishment and encouragement to blossom and flourish? Do you need more money? Do you need more education? Do you need more time? Do you need more opportunity? Or do we need to turn around? Do we need to come to God just as we are and turn around and seek forgiveness? And then use the gifts given to us and grow. Grow in our generosity of time, talent, and treasure. Grow in our patience. Grow in energy and encouragement. Grow in courage and truth. Grow in kindness. Growing, forgiving. Ask God for a forgiving heart. Do we need to ask God for more passion for the ministries of the church? Do we need to ask for a desire, a deep desire in our hearts to do God's work? A desire to study God's word? for our own lives? Do we need to ask God to humble us in some way? Give us more creativity and positivity to give us joy for the journey? Do we need to ask God to give us a heart of openness and inclusiveness? What do I need? What do we need? What do you need to blossom and flourish for the Lord? Just as I am, Lord, just as we are, Lord, we come only to you. Help us to know in our heart of hearts you have everything we need to grow into the people, the person, the faith family that you need us to be. I pray this in Jesus' holy precious name. Amen. time for us to lift our prayers and continue to encourage the, the faith family at both churches. Uh, these cards have such meaning for me. They're on my desk uh, 
every week. I don't look at them daily, but I look at them over and over and over again. Marisa is continuing to ask for prayers for Sue Bramer, her, her um, grandmother. She's having surgery on March 25th. That's this week. Right? Next week. No, nope, this week. Friday, Friday. She's also continuing to ask prayers for Taylor Smith, who's recovering from surgery. Um, she survived a, a brain tumor surgery. Is home with her family. And she's asking for prayers for Russia and the Ukraine in Ukraine. Uh, Edith gave me this request, and maybe some of you have heard this. These are usually the kinds of things I don't hear during the week, so I appreciate people who let me know what's going on in the community. Kenzie Gulick, that's Steve, Pastor Steve Gulick's youngest daughter, has been diagnosed with acute leukemia. She's at C.S. Knott Children's Hospital in Ann Arbor. So let's put the Gulicks, uh, particularly Steve's family, in our prayer hearts this week. And then one other is asking for prayers for people around the world, and I'm just going to adjust it a little bit. I pray you are praying for the situations in our world. People who this day will not be able to worship. because of the situation that they're in. The people of Ukraine and Russia, the people of China, North Korea, Iran. We take for granted that we can come to church. We take for granted that we don't have to hide out. We take for granted that we have a Bible of our own. And the rest of the world does not. So often is the case. Let's pray. Often our religious debates with Christianity are focused on what makes us worthy of salvation. Is it faith alone? Or the work that we do to follow rules and answer God's call? Many have wanted an easy answer. We've said, just tell me, Lord, what I have to do to enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, this week, we can affirm that God's love and grace come without price. Sometimes we make ourselves sick with overwork. That's not the answer to what ails us. God does call us to work together to alleviate the suffering of others. Not so we can buy the golden ticket to eternal life, but so that all might know a heaven of help right here on earth. Lord, you've heard the prayers of our lips. You know the prayers that still remain in our hearts. You've told us it's all right to pray for ourselves and certainly to pray for others. Help us to grow in our understanding of that. Help us to grow in our prayer life. And as we see you in action, help us to remember that all things are possible through you. Amen. I did forget one prayer request, and that is that Lynn Matthews needs a ride on Wednesday the 30th to Alma to a dermatology appointment. And if you can help with that ride today, please see Lynn during coffee time. Join me in the Lord's Prayer. We're using the traditional Lord's Prayer. <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
the introduction to our offertory this morning, Giving is Better. From Acts 20, 35. In everything I showed you that by working hard in this manner, you must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he himself said. It is more blessed to give to receive. That surprised me. I'm going to repeat that last line. It is more blessed to give to receive. One of the most often quoted verses on giving are the statements attributed to Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. It is interesting to note that this quote doesn't appear in any of the Gospels. It is a reference to Christ's words by Paul in the book of Acts. This simple statement in Acts does indeed summarize Christ's attitude toward giving and receiving found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Giving is a much greater source of joy and contentment than giving, than getting. Remember that as you have the opportunity to give today. I have an offer to you by Christy. state of the world or our imperfect lives, 
We offer our gifts and ourselves and know that you transform what we plant into the produce of love. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of the month, Blessed Are They, uh, page 22155, and the faith we sing are on the screen.
we who remember that the world keeps spinning without us. And thank God for that. We who remember we are loved, 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 just being us. And now may the God who loves all of creation and you with our price. And Jesus, our companion along this crooked path called life, and the Holy Spirit, who loves to improvise in surprising ways, go with us, dwell with us, and give us joy. Amen. Amen. Join us in our uh, choral response. That's enough for me. It's on your announcement sheet. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Sure, love me.